Hi guys, so today I'm going to do a, sort of a follow-up video to my last video that I did about how I lowered my A1C. I mentioned briefly in that video how I treat low blood sugars to avoid the rebound, and I decided that that topic deserved its own video uh, because it was way too long to include in that video. If you missed that previous video that I did, I'll link it down below so that you can check it out if you're interested how I lowered my A1C and just overall how I treat my type 1 diabetes. But for this video, I'm just going to talk about how I treat low blood sugars. So as I mentioned in that last video, one of my biggest problems for like the first 10 years that I was diabetic was uh, roller coaster blood sugars. And one of the biggest causes of the roller coaster blood sugars was when I would get low. Because what would happen, like every single time I got low, I would get the low blood sugar, I would treat the low blood sugar, and then I would get a rebound. Now my doctors, when I would talk to them about this, you know, roller coaster I was on constantly, like every day, I was told as a diabetic, as a type 1 diabetic, that's just part of the disease. Like your blood sugars will go up and down like that because uh, um, it just happens. And what I've found is that in most cases, if you treat your blood sugars, if you treat your low blood sugars um, in, the, in a specific way, you will never ever get a rebound and I, I'm proof to that because for the last five years since I read that life-changing book uh, and started following what this doctor, this he's a type 1 diabetic himself, what this doctor teaches, I have never, not even once, had a rebound and that's including when I had blood sugars as low as 30. Uh, if I treat my blood sugar, my low blood sugar in a predictable way, I can bring it right back up to 80, 85 in my case. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I do that. Now it's pretty, the theory behind this is pretty simple. And again, when I read this in the book, it's one of those things that was like revolutionary to me. It was like a new way, no doctor had ever talked like this before. And yet it's the simplest theory. And I don't understand why, why not all doctors teach this because it's just, it seems obvious after you hear it, it seems obvious. And here's what it is. To treat a low blood sugar, there's a specific formula. The same way you have a specific formula when you give yourself insulin, like for example, I used to be on the insulin pump and for every 15 carbohydrates, I would take one unit of insulin. That was my formula. And so if you know, if you eat 30 carbohydrates, that would, you just do a little equation and that would mean two units of insulin. Well, why is it then that the same doctors who gave me that instruction told me that when I get low, let's say my blood sugar is 60, the instruction was drink some juice. Drink some juice. And specifically their instruction was to drink a juice box. A juice box is a, a good amount. And here in the States, um, those are pretty common. You know, kids often have those in their lunch boxes. You know, it's like a, a little, a small serving of juice that comes in a small box. And my doctor said, that's how you treat a low. Carry around a juice box with you, and when you get low, you drink the juice box, wait 15 minutes, check your blood sugar again, and if you're still low, have some more juice. Now that seems pretty flimsy when you've just talked about all these other very specific formulas, you know, 15 grams of carbohydrates equals so and so amount of insulin. Why isn't it more uh, a more specific formula for treating lows? So this, this book, um, the one that I talked about in the, the last video that I did, had a completely different um, different way of treating lows, and it, like I said, it makes so much more sense. So the way the way this book describes treating lows is that just like your insulin ratio, you know, doctors will also tell you one unit of insulin will drop your blood sugar by what, like 45, 50, 60. Everybody's different, so there's not one amount that that works for everybody. But there's a ratio, right? If you have to correct a high blood sugar you have a formula, like a math equation, of how much to give yourself. Well, why not have the opposite be true as well? So this doctor, who again, he's a type 1 diabetic himself, and he learned this method by experimenting on himself initially, and then his patients. Um, why not also have a, a formula for how much one gram of glucose will raise your blood sugar? And in that case, if you could figure out how much one gram of glucose would raise your blood sugar, then hypothetically, you'd be able to type in a formula, 
take exactly the right amount of glucose and get yourself right back up to your target blood sugar. Well, that's exactly what, what I do and what, what he teaches his patients how to do. Now, in his book, he describes, you know, like a common, common formula for somebody who is an average weight. He, he uses 140 pounds. Uh, for somebody who's 140 pounds, um, one gram of pure glucose will raise your blood sugar, hypothetically, by five by five units. So if you take one gram of glucose, your blood sugar will go up by five. And the thing is, after experimenting this with a long time, he's right, it is fairly predictable. Now, it's absolutely essential when you treat low blood sugars to eat the most pure form of glucose you can possibly get your hands on because anything that's called carbohydrate is gonna to be too complex. If you're using carbohydrates, which is found in juice or bread or fruit or anything like that, it's going to be too complex and it'll stay in your system for too long and therefore, you know, it'll raise the blood sugar, but then it'll continue to raise it hours later. Pure glucose leaves your system in 40 minutes. So his theory, if you, if you calculate exactly how many grams of pure glucose, you can get your blood sugar back up to what it is. So let me explain what I do. I have these uh, glucose tabs. These are just generic Walgreens glucose tabs. You can get them at any pharmacy here in the States. And I think the um, brand name is like Dex4. And these things look like this. They're sort of a large tablet with a, a line down the center showing you what half is. And each one of these pure glucose tabs has four grams of glucose. So the way that works, Let's say my blood sugar is 65, and I need it to be 85. 85 is my target blood sugar that I always aim for. What I would do is calculate, okay, if I'm 65, I need to be 20 points higher. That means I need to make my blood sugar go up by 20, which means I'm going to need 4 grams of glucose. 4 grams of glucose, remember, 1 gram raises you by 5, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20. All right, so four grams of glucose only, only four, is gonna raise my blood sugar by 20 points, which is a lot, it raises it by a lot. Um, like one gram will raise you by a lot. So if I follow that formula and only take four grams of glucose, I can very predictably bring my blood sugar from 65 to 85, and that's what I do. And it, it works without fail. Like I said, this works even if you have a really low blood sugar. You're not gonna have a rebound if you don't overcorrect. And that was life-changing for me. Why was I having rebounds every time I was low? I was taking too much. I was overcorrecting. It's that simple. You're getting high after you have lows because you're taking too much. One juice box, what those doctors told me to consume, has 15 grams of carbs. 15. And that's carbs, so it's complex. It's going to stay in your system longer. Even if it was pure glucose, working by this formula, 15 times 5? That's gonna raise my blood sugar, but I can't even do that math in my head. Uh, that's gonna raise my blood sugar by a lot. You know, I, I only need four grams of glucose to get my blood sugar from 65 to 85. So in my experience, the, the main cause of my rebound effect was that I was overcorrecting. Now, I was following doctor's orders, but what doctors were telling me was, uh, it, was it was too much. and. Again, I think it's related to the fact that doctors are afraid of lows because, you know, technically a low blood sugar can kill you if it gets dangerously low. So your doctors would rather be safe than sorry and make tell you something that's going to make your blood sugar too high because as long as your blood sugar is high, you can't die instantly. So, you know, they take a more cautious approach. Um, I think it's because they don't trust patients to know their own bodies and to know how to, um, you know, to be able to recognize when you're too low. Now, one more thing I wanna say about this method that's um, gonna make it a little bit more difficult to treat lows. If you're um, eating large amount of carbohydrate and you're taking large doses of insulin, this is where a problem comes in. If you've miscalculated how much insulin to give yourself, and let's say you've given yourself two units too much, uh, that's going to make your blood sugar drop very quickly uh, because it's almost like you have an insulin overdose. So if you're dealing with insulin overdose, like let's say too much insulin for what you ate, instead of your blood sugar going down very gradually, it's going to plummet. 
because you've taken too much insulin. So if your blood sugar is low and dropping fast, like plummeting, then this uh, method, you know, like it's not, the calculation is not gonna be perfect. If your blood sugar is plummeting, then probably four grams of glucose, it's not gonna be as predictable, you know, because you have excess insulin in your body. Does that make sense? Um, what you're gonna need to do in that case is, you know, correct how I explained, and then wait for actually 40 minutes. This doctor recommends 40 minutes. You wait until all of the glucose has worked in your system before correcting again. And then recheck your blood sugar. If it's still low, you just keep correcting it in the same way that I described. So it would be a, you know, a real hassle to do that. And so I understand in the case of like a plummeting blood sugar, it's a lot more convenient just to sort of double up on your, on your correction. But that's a, another reason why a low carbohydrate diet is so essential for tight control because when you eat, this is the law of small numbers, when you eat less carbohydrate and take less insulin, you know, small numbers of everything, your blood sugar doesn't really plummet. Like I had that problem when I was on the insulin pump and eating a lot of carbs, but now uh, with a very low carbohydrate diet, my blood sugar never, I mean, it's always sort of very gradual. If it gets too low, it's a gradual decline. And if it gets too high, it's a very gradual incline. And so I'm able to catch things before, you know, without like that scary roller coaster up and down. So that's the one disclaimer, you know, if you're having a plummeting blood sugar, it's going to be difficult to treat your blood sugar no matter how you do it. But I just wanted to film this video so that you could hear how I've completely eliminated the rebound effect from my life. Like literally, it works every time. I've never gotten a rebound, just never. Um, and this is, I, sorry I keep saying that, but it's like revolutionary for me because for 10 years I was told you have the rebound. It just, it's something that you can't help. It's the Samoji effect, it just happens. And so that also meant that I just accepted it. I was like, oh, well, if this is a, a medical phenomenon, then I, there's nothing I can do to stop it. But there is something to do to stop it. It doesn't happen to me anymore. It's just, it's crazy how that changed my blood sugar control. So anyway, I hope this video was adequate. If you're interested in uh, what I talked about, Dr. Bernstein describes it much, much better in his book, Diabetes Solution. So if you're interested in it, Again, get the book and read his chapter on how to correct lows. It's a very um, dense read and there's a lot of information in there. So any of the stuff I've talked about, you're going to get a lot more information from that book. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to his website down below as well in case you're interested in checking that out. So for now, I hope my explanation was adequate. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below and I will make sure to respond to them. And uh, and. For now, that, that's it for this video, and I will see you for my 11-week pregnancy update. Wow, I can't believe it. It's like really going by quickly. So that'll be, um, I'll record that later on this week. So uh, that'll be the next video you see. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.